أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بفضل الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين وحجته على العالمين الحجة بن الحسن فداه أرواح العالمين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أبد الآبدين وذهر الداهرين اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين قال الله العظيم في كتابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين ذرية بعضها من بعض والله سميع عليم One of the substantial and huge evidence that Islam is the religion of Allah and is the right religion and is a religion that everyone should consider as his religion one of the huge evidence of that is that the holy book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Almighty's, Almighty Allah's prophet and the Prophet's successes and a progeny talk about other prophets and the successes as well and talk about other religion. So when you go to the Holy Book of Allah, Al-Quran Al-Kareem, you don't see only the name of the Prophet although the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the one who was sent by Allah to guide human beings and he was sent to guide everyone but when you go and recite Quran you see that the holy book of Allah talks from Adam to Muhammad peace be upon them all so it's not only about Muhammad it's about the whole religion it's not only about religion of Islam but it's about all religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other words <clears throat> We can understand that the God who has sent Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to guide human beings, has sent Prophet Adam, Prophet Noah, Prophet Abraham, Jesus, Moses, and the rest, Jacob. So one God has decided to send all of those prophets and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, too many of them in his book. And even he says that منهم من قصصنا عليك ومنهم من لم نقصص عليك That we have mentioned some of them to you and we haven't mentioned some others to you. But in other words, that we accept all of them our, as our prophets, as our, uh, some of them as our apostles and messengers and etc. <clears throat> so the... This evidence can prove to those who believe in other religion, such as Christianity or Judaism, or etc., that the Holy Book of Allah, Al Quran Al Karim, is not a book who was written by the Prophet. No, it's the Book of Allah, it's the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same God that sent Adam and Jesus and Moses, etc. And actually, when you see Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Prophet Moses in his name more than mentioning Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I've heard that uh, from a Sunni scholar as well. Although he was trying to say uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned Prophet Moses more than Prophet Muhammad. Yes, this is correct. Uh, Prophet, Muhammad, Prophet Moses was mentioned more than Prophet Muhammad 
in his name in Quran, but the holy book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to our Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anzalna alayk, litukhrija nas, O our Prophet, we descend upon you, so you can uh, take out those who are deceived by uh, shaitan and iblis and etc. out of their uh, ignorance. So the Quran is talking to the Prophet wasallam. So it's not that Prophet Moses is much more important than Prophet Muhammad wasallam in the Quran. No. But all of them are prophets of Allah. لا نفرق بين أحد من رسلك. We cannot differentiate between any of your prophets or Allah. We have to believe in all of them. We have to believe in the whole system that you created. We cannot exclude anyone. But that doesn't mean that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not prefer some of his prophets and messengers upon others. No, that's something else. For, sh for sure, there is no doubt that our prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has been preferred upon all prophets. As we know that Prophet Ibrahim is better than the rest of our prophets, prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah Muhammad. Of course, uh, some of prophets are better than, uh, higher in their status than uh, compared to others and etc. For instance, Prophet Joseph was higher in his status, even higher than his father's status, Jacob. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Prophet Jacob and his brothers uh, to show submission to Prophet Joseph. Although Joseph was the son of Jacob and Ya'qub, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet we see that he ordered Jacob to uh, show submission towards Prophet Joseph. <laughs> so, yes, this fact is correct that in name, Prophet Moses has been mentioned more than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Musa more than Muhammad. <clears throat> but when you see the whole Quran, of course Allah subhanahu wa taala talks to His Prophet in this book much more than talking and mentioning uh, the stories of Prophet uh, Moses. But by putting that aside, we can come to a, to a very important conclusion that. This book, Quran, is a book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that recognizes all prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a very important message. So look at how Quran subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his stories and, and how Prophet Adam uh, has been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to represent him on the ground. قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his uh, angels that I have appointed someone to represent me on the earth. قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفُكُ الدِّمَا Do you want to put someone on the earth with this nature that he has uh, desires, he has hawa, that he might corrupt the earth while you have us as uh, angels who don't have desires and can worship you so why what is the point of appointing someone on the ground he talks about prophet adam he talks about prophet noah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to be kind and keen with his nation and try as much as he can to guide them, he talks about them, about Prophet Nuh as well. He talks about Prophet Ibrahim as well, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen him uh, to represent him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped him against Namrud and how he saved him from the fire of Namrud and etc. And he talks about uh, Prophet Musa how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from Pharaoh. When Pharaoh decided to kill Israelite, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Musa in a way that no one can imagine. 
So Pharaoh decided to kill because some of his astronomers uh, found out that uh, a boy will be born on that year that and that boy will finish uh, Pharaoh's empire rulement. So Pharaoh decided to kill every single baby boy that was born on that year. Thousands of them were killed. And eventually Moses end up in the castle and palace of Pharaoh and Pharaoh end up showing love towards uh, Moses. Even he told him that Alam Nurabbika Fina Sagiran. Please, brothers and sisters, recite Quran as much as you can. Listen to Quran as much as you can. Read the uh, translation of Quran as much as you can. I really encourage you. I'm trying to persuade you. I'm encouraging you. I'm trying to persuade you to read Quran as much as you can. To understand and, and comprehend Almighty God's verses as much as you can. To go back to Ahlul Bayt's narrations as much as you can. I really persuade all of you, if you get the chance to get Usul al-Kafi, to read Usul al-Kafi. It's with the translation. Probably the translation is not 100% perfect, perfect. That's okay. You can understand the meaning of it. That's okay. So look at this verse. Alam nurabbika fina sagiran. Oh, Moses. Pharaoh told Moses that we we actually we raised you on our hands. We raised you. We showed love towards you. And now you are coming towards us and telling us that you don't accept uh, that we are God. You don't accept us as God. Of course, <laughs> Prophet Musa was the messenger of Allah, not the messenger of Pharaoh. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show Pharaoh how weak and fragile his, his empire is that his enemy, the one who considered as his enemy, was grown up. In his palace, without Pharaoh knowing that he's, he's actually raising his enemy. And of course, Musa, peace be upon him, offered uh, to uh, Pharaoh uh, the rulement. He told him, if you want to be the ruler, that's okay. We don't want... Your government. You can keep it for yourself. But you have to believe in God. And I will guarantee. To you that. You will continue. Uh, the ruling of the country. And uh, Pharaoh started to laugh. And uh, told his, his uh, ministers. And his uh, soldiers. That look at this guy. He doesn't have clothes. Proper clothes. To wear, and he wants to guarantee our rulement, our power. <laughs> so, uh, what I want to try, what I'm trying to say, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sometimes comes uh, and and tells uh, stories of his uh, prophets in the Holy Book of Quran in detail, and Ahl Bayt alaihim salam, the Prophet and Ahl Bayt explain that more. Why? We should ask ourselves why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned Prophet Musa and has mentioned Prophet Jesus and protected Prophet Jesus and his mother, especially his mother, from the accusations that she was accused by some, by some Jewish. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected her, defended her in, in the holy book of Quran? Because... At the end of the day, Jesus is, is a prophet of God. Moses is a prophet of God. It's not liberal and labor parties. No, no, it's not like that. All of them are prophets of God. And they work for one cause. 
to encourage people and persuade people to obey Allah and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this evidence in Quran is a very important evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes all prophets and all messengers and all books as well. So the first verse that I've recited, it's in chapter 3, Surah Al-Imran, verse number 33. إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى آدَمَ وَنُوحًا وَآلَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَآلَ عَمْرَانَ عَلَى الْعَنَى That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen Adam, Noah, and the progeny of Ibrahim, and the progeny of Imran upon, uh, upon people. ذُرِّيَّةً بَعْضُهَا مَنْ بَعْضُ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, prophets, uh, Prophet uh, Adam and Nuh and Al Ibrahim. So Al Ibrahim, uh, it's Ismail, Ishmael, and uh, Yaqub as well, and uh, Isaac, and etc. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them. And then he talks in Surah Al Imran about Imran, the grandmother of Prophet Jesus. He talks about her and he defends uh, Mary from. Uh, uh, and he purifies Mary from the accusation that some Jewish accused her with. This is the first verse that I wanted to talk with you about. And the second verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he comes uh, and talks about Torah and Bible, that Prophet Jesus told his nation, وَمُصَدِّقَ لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ وَلُؤْحِلَّ لَكُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي حُرِّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَجِئْتُكُمْ بِآيَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُونَ That my book, Bible, accepts some of Torah's teachings. Not all of it, some of it. It doesn't mean that there's contradictions between Torah and, 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 and Bible. No. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might change some of his laws. And that's something else. مُصَدِّقَ لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَةِ Okay. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talks about Jesus. And he says, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى So it's verse 55. The second verse that I shared with you is verse 50. And now, we're talking about verse 55 and chapter 3. And chapter 3, Surah Al Imran, talks about other religions uh, Jewish, Christian, uh, Judaism, Christianity. So it's very good to uh, recite with uh, this perspective. إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ ثُمَّ إِلَيَّ مَرْجِعُكُمْ فَأَحْكُمُ بَيْنَكُمْ فِي مَا كُنْتُمْ فِيهِ تَخْتَلِفُونَ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَوَعَذِّبُهُمْ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا Till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِنَّ مَثَلَ عِيسَى عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ آدَمَ خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُنْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala glorifies Prophet Jesus. Why should Quran praising Prophet Jesus? Is Quran preaching for Christianity? Of course not. But there is no difference between Prophet Jesus and Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in their prophet's hood. Both of them are prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our point is this. Just come and look at the Quran. How Quran talks about Prophet Jesus. How Quran talks about Prophet Moses. How Quran talks about Prophet Abraham. He doesn't exclude any prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran praises all of them. So why should we, why shouldn't we consider looking into Quran? Why shouldn't we consider preaching for Quran? Talking with the rest of the world about the Quran. While you see the strength of Quran, we can, we can feel the strength of Quran. We can see the power of Quran. That no one can deny its power. So, listen, if you are an ambassador, if someone is an ambassador of a country, 
he should he should uh, talk about he, the country that he follows someone is an ambassador of ecuador he should talk about ecuador if you see someone comes he's ambassador of ecuador talking about venezuela talking about us or etc so what are you talking about you're interfering in things that doesn't relate to you it's not a, not your business but when you come to quran you see that quran talks about christianity judaism about jesus about moses about abraham so all of them are messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so our prophet prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should talk about other prophets if he doesn't recognize them why the prophet should convey the message of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the community to people messages of allah about other prophets if he doesn't believe in them if the religion of islam is not authentic okay so that shows us that the same god who has sent prophet jesus has sent prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is a very important point i believe and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says anna mathal isa and allah ka mathal adam خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابِ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُنْ There is no different between Prophet Jesus and Prophet Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created Prophet Adam and as he has created Prophet Jesus. Because some Christians say, okay, we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Why? Because he didn't have a father. Okay? He was created from uh, a mother only. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, okay, what about Adam? He didn't have both of them, father or mother. But yet we see that Christian Christians don't believe that Adam was the son of God, was a God. So if you want to believe that someone is son of God, you have to believe that Adam was son of God because he didn't even have a mother so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring this argument in surah al-imran when he says yes in the isa and allah ka mathal adam khalaqahu min fara thumma qala lahu kun fayakun this is the fourth verse that I, I wanted to share with you and the fifth verse let me found it let me find it. Yeah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Ibrahim in verse 65 of the same chapter, Ya Ahl al Kitab. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing uh, Ahl al Kitab, Christians and Jewish. Ya Ahl al Kitab. Why? Ibrahim wa ma you are debating about Abraham. Well, you know that uh, Torah and Bible uh, were sent after Prophet Ibrahim. Okay? Because you don't have the knowledge of Prophet Ibrahim. About, you don't have anything about uh, Prophet Ibrahim. You don't know the book of Prophet Ibrahim, so why you are trying to debate, uh, bring Ibrahim in your debates? Ma kana Ibrahim Yahudiyan wala Nasraniyan, walakin kana Hanifan Muslim wa ma kana min Mushrikin. Because Jewish and Christians in the era of the Prophet used to tell the Prophet, okay, we are willing to help you to believe in you if you address that you are Jewish or Christian. And the Prophet replied, no, no, I'm not a Jewish, I'm not a Christian. I believe in them as prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe in Judaism as a religion of Allah. I believe and recognize in Christianity as religion of Allah. But I've got my own religion. It's Islam. Inna deena and Allah al-Islam. That submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, of course, there are some differences, uh, minor differences between religions. It's not major differences. Minor differences. And I've got my own religion. It's Islam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Abraham, what about Abraham? Do you accept? Do you believe that Abraham was a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of course you do. Of course you do. 
You believe that Abraham was a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, yet he wasn't a Christian, he wasn't a Jewish. Yet you believe in him as a, a messenger of Allah. So you have to believe in the Prophet as well, as a messenger of Allah. If you see the signs that can prove the prophethood of our Prophet Muhammad wasallam, believe in him. It doesn't have to be Christians or Jewish so you can believe in him. No, no. As Ibrahim, Prophet Ibrahim, who you believe in him as a messenger of Allah. He wasn't Christian. He wasn't Jewish. He was sent to the nation before Christianity and before Judaism. مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ He was a Muslim. He submitted to Allah and he did not associate anything with Almighty God. So he believed in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was my topic. Of course, if you go to Quran and recite Quran from the very beginning of the Quran, Surah Al-Hamd, Surah Al-Fatah, up to the end of Quran, Surah Al-Nas, you will find uh, tens of verses talking about, hundreds probably of verses talking about uh, other religion, talking about other prophets, uh, recognizing other religion, other prophets. So this book is a strong book that although it's not uh, promoting Christianity or Judaism or any other religion, pro it's only promoting Islam, yet we see it, it, it has the strength to promote only Islam as a religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the era of the Prophet uh, while recognizing uh, other prophets and uh, their religions and their books. And this is very important that it has the power to promote Islam while recognizing uh, other prophets and their books and their religions. So this was uh, my first class. If you have any question, please ask and then inshallah we'll go to the second class. I have a question to regard the religion that the Prophet was practicing before the Ba'tha. Uh, Hanifiya, Abrahamic religion, or was he practicing the religion of Islam that God has entrusted to him? So, in accordance to some of our narrations and verses that the Prophet وسلم, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him uh, to the nation, he was practicing, of course he, he, he believed in the oneness of Allah, he was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, probably he was practicing some of Prophet Ibrahim's uh, sharia ah and uh, jurisprudence and some of Islamic jurisprudence who are not that sure about it, but in accordance to some of our narrations, yes, and verses, yes, he was on the religion of Ibrahim. So in other words, he wasn't a Christian, he wasn't a Jewish, okay? He believed in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because back then, if you wanted to believe in a Christianity, you have to believe that uh, Jesus is the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to believe in Judaism, you have to believe in uh, that that Uzair Azra was a son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet wasn't, definitely wasn't a Christian, wasn't uh, Jewish, because he used to believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, this uh, uh, huge evidence is uh, an evidence that we can promote uh, to non-Muslims, especially those who have religions, such Christians and Jewish, Jewish, and to tell them, just come and read Quran. If you want even to know about your prophet, come and read Quran and recite Quran, and you will find informations that you can't find in Bible or Torah about your prophets and your religion. And this is very important. This can prove that, okay, this religion, the religion of Islam, is worth of considering as a religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any other question? 
No. Okay. So, sallallahu alayhi wa ala Muhammad and wa alayhi wa ala wa alayhi wa ala 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 wa so he wasn't that's that's uh, what uh, i'm not that sure about but what i'm sure about that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran bal hanifan muslim that uh, uh, yeah qalat al yahud kunu nasara tahtadu qalat al nasara kada allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no believe in the oneness of allah of course he believed in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course. And uh, what's the problem? Does it have any problem by itself to follow the jurisprudence laws of uh, another uh, prophet before the prophet gets sent to uh, guide people? I don't see any fundamental problem with that. But that's some, that, that is something that we have to look into our narrations. Um, I'm not that aware of that exactly at this point and at this moment. So I don't want to say something that is not accurate. Uh, so, so simply, I don't know. And I'm not afraid of saying that, sister. I don't know. But what I know is that in some verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Prophet follows the footsteps of Ibrahim, at least in the believing of the, one, in the, in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.